This week on Council Bluffs News, thousands of wheels roll into town for Ragbri. See where these riders are traveling from. Geocaching. People are searching for hidden trinkets at Hitchcock Nature Center. And fun at the fair. Families find entertainment at the East Pottawatomie County Fair in Avoca, Iowa. That and more all on this week's Council Bluffs News. Welcome to this week's Council Bluffs News. I'm Marie Zeitner. For the second time in five years, Council Bluffs hosts the start of RAGBRAI, Register's annual great bike ride across Iowa. Thousands of cyclists from the United States and even around the world travel to Iowa to participate in the event. The day before the truck begins, an expo at the Mid-America Center fills with food, vendors, and most importantly, the riders. Food, tents, and music. Pre-Rag Bri officially kicks off Saturday, July 20th with an expo. I can't wait to see more of it. It's pretty cool and I see there's a lot of things I'd like to pick up and drop some money in Iowa. Vendors from all around the state set up in Mid-America Center's vast parking lot. There's a lot of neat stuff in there. Stuff like the official Rag Bri t-shirt, cycling clothes, and sunglasses. Uh, anything you could need as far as on your bike. If you forgot something, you could pick up there. Like I forgot a hat, so I bought a hat today in there. With thousands of people attending Rag Bri this year, the surroundings can be overwhelming. This is my first time in Iowa, and it's been great. Everybody's been super nice. The organization seems wonderful, and it's just been great. I hope at the end we are a big group of people and a big group of new friends. But Council Bluffs welcomes everyone with open arms. The atmosphere has been unbelievable. The people have been, everyone's friendly. Uh, the town's been great for the small part I've seen, but uh, it's just an unbelievable event. I've only seen this little slice of it coming from the south here, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. Everybody's super nice, uh, everybody's pretty welcoming, so it's a great place so far. The expo allows riders to meet new people and have some fun and before the ride begins. Photo bomb. <laughs> Many of the cyclists from out of town are camping out one way or another, some in tents, others in hotels, and a few even staying with host families throughout the city. As the minutes pass, the journey across Iowa becomes real. Cyclists spill their thoughts to CBTV as the great bike ride approaches. Ragbri. Delightful so far. A bike ride for the mature. I've been riding about 20 years, yeah. And the amateurs. Doing Ragbri? This is my very first one. With more than 400 miles of terrain. I'm looking forward to everything. Every single mile I'm gonna ride. It's a long way, but it doesn't keep people from riding. This is the first year that I might be doing the whole thing. The trek across the state can be rough. This sounds like a week of you better be ready for it. But the challenge is one these riders are looking forward to. I've never done anything like it, so I want to see what it would tackle it, see what it would be like. It's been an experience getting ready for it. Despite the grind of the ride, cyclists say having a good time is what it's all about. It's fun. It's something I've never done before. And, you know, right before going off to college, I want to try to have a little adventure before that. I want to see the country. I want to meet the people. That's the best way to do it. First-time rag ride riders are sure they're going to be back next year. If it goes well this year, I'll, I'll probably talk to some friends about setting up a team next year and then doing the whole week instead of just the half this time around. While veterans of the ride continue their summer traditions. It's the best place to be the last week of July. It really is. Whether you're a cyclist or not. RAGBRAI continues through July 27th with stops at seven different cities across the state. Nearly 16,000 cyclists are participating in this year's ride, and with its success, Council Bluffs hopes to be the starting point again in the near future. With the technology of our time, many things have changed, but even a simple scavenger hunt now has a high-tech side. Here's IWTV student Aaron Mefford with more. Hey,
You never know what you'll find on a trek through the woods of Hitchcock Nature Center near Crescent. Hey, Diane. I don't see the bird. This group of kids is excited about finding a hidden box. It's part of the second annual Geocache Earth Bash. Now you may be wondering, what is a geocache? Well, environmental educator Sydney Hyatt tells us more. Geocaching is like a technological scavenger hunt and it uses GPS units um, with specific coordinates called waypoints that you can plug into your GPS unit and then using an electronic compass, it points you in the direction that you're going to take in order to reach specific locations along the trail. The event features a short class on running the GPS units, an overview of the tasks, then finishes with a trip through the trails of Hitchcock on a geocache hunt with only the participants' GPSs to guide them. This event features three different paths for each expertise level. Rick Weigman came here today with past caching experience. It's just a lot of fun. I mean, if you've never tried it, it's, it, it's cheap. It's a great way of entertainment. It's a great family activity. It's a great group activity, and I highly recommend it. This will be Chrissy Edwards' first time caching. Um, I'm just uh, geocaching with some friends, and it looks really fun. So I, this is my first time, so I might as well try it out. Geocaching is a great family activity with fun for all ages. For CBTV 17, I am Aaron Mefford. If you would like more information on geocaching, please visit geocaching.com. Now time for News Around the Bluffs, sponsored by Mr. Ed's Flagpole Company of Council Bluffs, right off Valley View Drive between Madison Avenue and Highway 92. Excessive heat warnings caused the Salvation Army to open its cooling stations Tuesday, July 16th. People can come in and just uh, relax. Uh, we have some comfy chairs and cold bottled water. The Salvation Army offers refreshments to the public when the temperature is forecast to be 90 degrees or above for at least three days in a row. Another way you can cool down this summer is by hitting up a hydrant party. Many kids and parents show up to the various locations to have a splash. The parties are held every Tuesday and Thursday throughout the Council Bluffs area. You can find the next hydrant party happening near you. Youth activities are listed on the Parks and Rec page on councilbuffs-ia.gov. There is an answer to why your child may have autism, ADHD, or sleep problems. Dr. Ty Dwarak of Bluffs Family Chiropractic explains how medication isn't always the solution. Some of these kids definitely do need medications, but that can't be the only thing. Um, you know, it's, it is a chemistry, chemistry issue for a lot of them, but it's because of you know, the neuro neurology being off and some of the changes that we see with that. So if you just try and you know, medicate it away, it, it doesn't work. This Kids Talk workshop on Monday, July 22nd is helping people understand that stress at a young age, even if it's caused by birth, can disrupt a child's central nervous system, making it possible for that child to acquire problems as it grows. There's a, a lot of different disorders out there and they're not necessarily fully understood. If you missed the event but would like more information about what you can do for a child you know that has a disorder, contact Dr. Ty Dorak at 712-256-5990. Coming up on Council Bluffs News, Family Fun in Avoca, Iowa at East Fair, and after the break, details on the more well-known fair in Pot County, West Fair. Byron Mankey joins us in studio. We'll be right back. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers to help us better care for ourselves and the ones we love. This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org.
So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. I'm one on Lucky Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning. 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. So I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. It's not his new group of friends. It's not the video games. It's not the neighborhood. Mom, do I have to go to school today? The biggest threat to your child's future could be you. Every day they miss, even in middle school, puts their graduation at risk. Welcome back to this week's Council Buffs News. I'm Marie Zeitner. Joining me in studio today is Byron Minky from West Fair. Thank you for being here, Byron. Thanks for having me. Okay, Byron, tell us a little bit about the activities going on at West Fair. Well, we've got a full slate of activities for this week uh, during the fair. Uh, the, uh, the new exciting thing, or we feel is exciting this year, is the front gate admission is free, and that's something we've been trying to do for several years and something that uh, takes a lot of support from our community sponsors, businesses, and, and other donors to step up and help us with that so that we can offer this as a, a free admission and parking is free. So that's, that's the great first news is people can get in, come out, and enjoy all the fun that we have uh, free of charge. Um, this year we've got a nice lineup of uh, what we call our green space uh, events um, that are ongoing every afternoon. We've got uh, this year the runaway saws carvers uh, that come and do the carving with the chainsaws. We've got the close encounters which is a live tiger show, the magic creations magic show, and then this year uh, we also have a live petting zoo that will be open uh, during the day as well. So a lot of family fun. A lot of family activities. So tell us some about some of the shows that are going on maybe at the arena. Sure. We, uh, you know, everything kind of gets kicked off on Wednesday night. We have our coronation of our queen. And uh, then at, uh, shortly after that is over, uh, we get started with our Nebraska pullers, which is a truck pulling. And, and they will have a few classes of tractor pulling, uh, which is always a favorite. Uh, Thursday night we have the horseshoe drags and motocross uh, races as well. Uh, another event that has really gotten big over the last several years is uh, Friday night in the arena and that is the figure eight races and then the culmination on Sunday evening is the uh, ever popular demo derby. Wow. So tell us about the admission for the arena. Is it the same as just general? No, the, uh, the free admission is, is to the fairgrounds. The uh, uh, arena events, uh, we still do charge uh, $10 for adults and $5 for kids. 
the younger kids, uh, I believe it's seven and under, get in free, but uh, otherwise the rest of the fairgrounds are open uh, free of charge. Okay, and how long does the fair go? The fair runs, we get kicked off on Wednesday, kind of officially with the Queen Contest on Wednesday evening. It runs through uh, Sunday evening. Uh, the grounds are open every day from seven until midnight. Uh, then on Monday is kind of the culmination and that's the uh, 4-H uh, livestock uh, auction that we have uh, and that kind of is the, the last event uh, on Monday. All right. And is there a website people can go to to find more information? Sure. Go to westfairevents.com and it'll have a complete listing of all the activities and what time everything is going on. And uh, the weather sounds great. We're looking forward to having a, a big crowd out there this year. All right. Thank you, Byron, for being here. Time now for Pets of the Week. Sponsored by Mad Cow Paintball of Louisville, Nebraska. Hi, my name is Misty Bino, and I'm a volunteer with Solus, support our local animal shelter. And this big guy here is Charlie. Charlie is a lab Doberman mix. He's about five years old, and he has been at the Council Bluffs Animal Shelter since April 18th. He's been here way too long, and he's waiting for his forever home. He was surrendered here, and they said that previously he had been house trained, and he does well with older kids. He's a little energetic, though, so he might knock over the smaller ones. If you are interested in adopting Charlie, his file number is 3961. This energetic terrier is just a puppy. This is Bella. She is seven months old. She's a terrier mix, and she was surrendered here. It, they just no longer had time for her, but she is a great dog. She has lived with other dogs. She's lived with cats, and she's lived with four young kids. So. She's she's pretty social little girl. If you are interested in adopting Miss Bella here, her file number is 178. This little kitty here is Vala. Vala is about three years old. She's a cream tabby and she was surrendered here. They just no longer had time for her. She is a very sweet kitty. And if you're interested in adopting Vala, her file number is 5078. These two little kitties here are Reese's and Buttercup, and they are between six and seven weeks old. They are both available for adoption now. And Reese's here is a tortoiseshell, and Buttercup is, um, looks like she's gonna be a long hair gray kitty. If you are interested in adopting either one of them, Reese's file number is 5056, and Buttercup's file number is 5070. This here is Mo. Mo is one of the three boys, Larry, Curly, and Mo, that are here available for adoption at the Council Bluffs Animal Shelter. He is a tan and white rat, and his brothers are all different colors. So if you are looking for a great companion and not for food, um, Larry, Curly, or Mo, or one of the other ones may be the right fit for you. His file number is 230, and if you are interested in any of the animals you've seen today, you can come down to the Council Bluffs Animal Shelter at 2821 South 15th Street in Council Bluffs. Still to come, families enjoy a night at a local fair and get your notebook ready for our weekly events calendar. Stay tuned. Give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. 
They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, they want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you got Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Here we go. We're going we're gonna to make some juice. Looks good. You ready to try it? Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's OK. okay. I she took another sip. You saw it. Search We Can for ideas on how to get healthy together. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. Know what? What? Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Time now for our weekly events calendar. Clean out any trash you have at KTNA's Discovery Days, Saturday, July 27th. From 9 to noon, you can bring trash, paint, and chemicals to the North Children's Square parking lot located at 714 Avenue E. If you have tires you want to recycle, call Sheila at 712-325-5842. And if you have scrap metal to be recycled, call Dan at 712-326-0126. Music in the Park continues at River's Edge Park Sunday, July 28th. Hear the sounds of Bill Wakefield and Random from 1 to 2.30 p.m. You can visit bluffsarts.org for a full schedule of bands and dates. Well, as mentioned before, West Fair is going on all week. But the East Pottawatomie County Fair starts a week earlier on July 17th. We drove to Avoca, Iowa to find out what East Fair has to offer. Most of the kids you see here at East Fair are 4-H members competing. We go to like camps and stuff and make projects there and then bring them here to fair and get ribbons and stuff. Ribbons and prizes. With the competition now behind them, Family Fun Night is all about having fun. It's nice just to, to, I think, allow all the little kids to get out and um, do all kinds of different activities. Kind of gets gives you a break from the busyness of the fair day. And there's something for everyone. The rides are fun. And it's fun to play with friends. Aside from the games, the kids play in bounce houses and go down a serious slide. It goes fast and we get to go with friends. We're having a good time. Throw in face painting and pony rides, East Fair is a success. Avoca, Iowa hosts East Fair every year in July. To learn more about its other events, you can visit PottawatomieCountyFair.com. Thanks for watching this week's Council Bluffs News. If you have any questions, comments, or story ideas, email us at cbtv at iwcc.edu, call us at 712-325-3312, or send us a message on Facebook. You can find us at facebook.com slash cbtv17. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Marie Zeitner. See you next week.